What really happened, after our human ancestors went through an extinction bottleneck, which resulted in 99% of ancient humans being wiped out 900,000 years ago? According to a groundbreaking new study, we need to consider what we know about the early Middle Pleistocene, around 700,000 years ago, to understand what might still be missing in the story of human evolution. In fact, you may have a ghostly remnant from a super-archaic proto-human that isn't our direct ancestor, lurking deep in your DNA. This is because Neanderthals, the common ancestor of Neanderthals and Denisovans, interbred with a small-brained, super-archaic hominin over half a million years ago. Regardless of which group the super-archaics belonged to, the new evidence of interbreeding provides a window into an ancient time period about which researchers know very little. According to the researchers, we're just shedding light on an interval in human evolutionary history that was previously shrouded in darkness. Archaeologists tell us that large-brained hominids and Aculian stone tools appear in Eurasia around this time. According to one theory, these early Eurasians descended from Neanderthals. The Neanderthal ancestors of Neanderthals and Denisovans split from the lineage leading to modern humans around 737,000 years ago. Neanderthals may have split off from another population before spreading into Eurasia. This date corresponds to a recent study that discovered the human population crashed around 900,000 years ago, remained extremely low for over 100,000 years, and then rapidly expanded around 800,000 years ago. This was most likely due to Ice Age conditions, followed by a warming period and population expansion into Eurasia from Africa or Southeast Asia's Sunderland region. This would be the Java Man fossils, which are estimated to be 1.6 million years old. If that were the case, they would not have been expanding into an empty continent, because Eurasia had been inhabited for 1.85 million years. The indigenous super-archaic population of Eurasia, may have met Neanderthal immigrants. This points to another admixture episode, from super-archaics to Neanderthals. According to calculations, that genetically distinct population existed for only about 15,000 years. According to models, the number of Neanderthals declined sharply around 700,000 years ago. Survivors interbred with members of the population that had long inhabited Eurasia before largely replacing them, and splitting into two populations, Denisovans and Neanderthals, respectively. Calculations show that at least 2% of Neanderthal DNA came from the older super-archaic Eurasian population. The Denisovans, also known as Denisova hominins, were an extinct species or subspecies of archaic human that roamed Asia during the Lower and Middle Paleolithic periods. They are considered a sister group to Neanderthals, but no formal species name has been established pending more complete fossil material. Recently, two new Denisova groups were identified using DNA sampling in Papua New Guinea. According to the study, the so-called D1 and D2 Denisovans split from the Altai Denisovan approximately 283,000 years ago and 363,000 years ago, respectively. In fact, they estimate the Altai Denisovans and these two groups Denisovans had been separated from one another for 350,000 years. Therefore, there are three different branches of Denisovans, but two of them were limited to island Southeast Asia. This also suggests that these Denisovan groups have a long history in the Sunderland region, and that they crossed open water to reach remote islands. Approximately 4% of the Denisovan genome, is derived from an unidentified archaic hominin, which could be the source of the anomalous ancient mitochondrial DNA, indicating that this species diverged from Neanderthals and humans more than a million years ago. The only Homo species known from the late Pleistocene are Homo erectus and Homo heidelbergensis, though Chinese specimens assigned to the latter were recently reclassified as Homo longi and Homo daliensis. The findings are consistent with the paleontologically established presence of Homo erectus in Eurasia, as well as a 737,000-year-old Eurasian divergence between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. In terms of the morphological distinction between sapiens and erectus, some researchers recognized them as subspecies, Homo sapiens sapiens and Homo sapiens erectus, owing to their overlapping morphology. Moreover, 
The evolution of Homo erectus and Neanderthalsovans in Eurasia has been revealed by the expansion of Eurasian paleontology. In this light, and in light of the Homo erectus fossil record, the findings are consistent with the emergence of a branch within a diversifying Homo erectus population. According to this theory, Neanderthalsovans split further into Denisovans and Neanderthals, with Denisovans primarily diversifying in Eastern Asia and the Sahul and Neanderthals occupying a large western Eurasian area. According to the new genetic study, ancestors of Neanderthals and Denisovans entered mainland Eurasia around 737,000 years ago, and interbred with a hominin population, that had left Africa much earlier. The discovery reveals the oldest known case of interbreeding among members of the genus Homo sapiens, which includes modern humans. Evidence of genetic exchanges between distinct hominid populations, approximately 400,000 years before Homo sapiens evolved, suggests that interbreeding played a role in Homo evolution, long before ancient people mated with Neanderthals and Denisovans. The story begins with an early Homo species migrating into Eurasia around 1.9 million years ago, in what was most likely the first Homo migration out of Africa. Those now extinct travelers could have been members of Homo erectus, a species that includes Eurasian fossils dating back about 1.8 million years, Java man, or another Homo population unknown from fossils. According to the researchers, ancestors of Neanderthals and Denisovans trekked into mainland Eurasia around 700,000 years ago. Previous research suggested that Neanderthals evolved around 300,000 years ago, raising concerns about the evolutionary identity of older, Neanderthal-like fossils. This episode of human evolution is a novel hypothesis, that proposes gene flow from superarchaics to Neanderthalsovans. Nevertheless, before accepting this, we should ask whether the evidence in its favor could be artifactual, reflecting a bias in sight pattern frequencies caused by sequencing error or somatic mutations. The evidence, however, shows that this is not the case. The super-archaic separation time is estimated to have occurred 2.3 million years ago. According to the researchers, this estimate may be skewed upward because the molecular clock assumes a relatively low mutation rate. Other authors would like slightly higher rates. Using a higher rate, the time would be 1.9 million years ago, right at the beginning of our genus. The 95% confidence interval for this clock is 1.8 to 2.2 million years. If superarchaics separated from an African population, this must have happened before superarchaics arrived in Eurasia. Nonetheless, the 1.85 million year date of the earliest Eurasian archaeological remains at Damanisi in Georgia is included in our 1.8 to 2.2 million year interval. As a result, Superarchaics could be descended from the earliest human dispersal into Eurasia, as represented by the Damanisi fossils. Some authors, on the other hand, prefer a higher mutation rate. The lower end of our confidence interval under this clock would be 1.6 million years ago. Thus, the findings support the theory that superarchaics arrived in mainland Eurasia after the discovery of the earliest remains in Georgia and in Java, Indonesia. Surprisingly, our evolutionary history is littered with interspecies sex. In one case, a group of Neanderthal and Denisovan ancestors interbred with their predecessor species around 744,000 years ago, just after the population bottleneck. Those forefathers were part of a super-archaic group in Eurasia that numbered between 20,000 and 50,000 people. The picture is consistent with a cold-related bottleneck in a Eurasian population, followed by population expansion and dispersal. Although the timings of the molecular estimates and climatic changes may not be exact, they do highlight the scenario of oscillating climatic conditions that are likely to have affected vegetation and population structures in both humans and their prey due to changes in sea levels and dispersal routes. The parameter NS in this graph represents the effective size of the super-archaic population. Because there are two sources of superarchaic DNA in the sample, this parameter can be estimated, implying that coalescence time within the superarchaic population influences site pattern frequencies. Although the confidence interval for this parameter is wide, even the low end implies a fairly large superarchaic population of 20,000 to 50,000 individuals. 
This does not necessitate a large number of super archaic humans, because geographic population structure can inflate effective size. This high estimate could imply that Neanderthals and Denisovans received gene flow from two distinct super archaic populations. The TND parameter represents the time between Neanderthals and Denisovans. The best guess, 737,000 years ago, is astonishingly old. Furthermore, the Neanderthal population that existed prior to this split was remarkably small, numbering only about 500 individuals. This supports previous findings of an early split between Neanderthals and Denisovans, as well as a bottleneck among their ancestors. Scientists can estimate the effective size of the Neanderthal population in two separate epochs because the analysis includes two Neanderthal genomes. The early epoch lasted 455,000 to 737,000 years ago, and the effective population size was large, 16,000 Neanderthals. It was smaller after 455,000 years ago, with only 3,400 individuals, around the time archaic Homo sapiens replaced Neanderthal mitochondrial DNA. These findings support previous findings that the Neanderthal population was initially large but then shrank. Alternatively, these Neanderthalans could have originated in Southeast Asia, and migrated to Eurasia when sea levels rose, drowning the supercontinent of Sunderland, which is now represented by the Indonesian and Malaysian islands. When the second wave of ancestors arrived on mainland Eurasia, they most likely interbred with indigenous Eurasians, largely replacing them, and splitting into eastern and western subpopulations known as Denisovans and Neanderthals. Another recent study discovered that the genes responsible for skin pigmentation variation evolved around 1 million years ago. This study discovered that genes for both lighter and darker skin evolved 900,000 years ago, implying that early humans had brown skin before 1 million years ago. Thus, variation in skin pigmentation was most likely an important evolutionary trait for early human adaptation and survival during times of climate change. However, several mysteries remain. The researchers are unsure of which ancient species or group the super-archaic population belonged to. All they know is that genetic evidence suggests that super-archaics split from our human lineage about two million years ago, and that ancient humans were living in Eurasia at the time. Several human species, or groups of human species, lived in Eurasia at the time the super-archaics split off from our lineage. Homo erectus was our ancestor who first walked upright and is represented by Peking man, Java man, Bodo man and other fossils. Any of those groups could be the super archaics, or they could be some unknown fossils. And with that thought-provoking implication, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our human history. Until next time, stay curious, and stay questioning.